Well, let's get started. So the lecture I'm, I will be covering today is kinematics of various mobile robots. So what you have learned so far uh, with me in the previous lectures was about all mechanical wheels and omni wheel mobile robots. So actually I didn't plan to give a lecture on all the mobile robots but I just realized that it's very important to introduce at least some basic kinematics of other type of mobile robots. So the, the content of this lecture mainly refer to this book and in, in this book uh, the explanation of kinematics or other thing in a very simple way. Um, for the mechanical wheel and omni wheel as well, uh, the equation derived based on geometry is very simple. I mean, more simple than what I explained before. Uh, but the advantage and disadvantage of the method in book and my my lecture is that. If you, you, you can modify very little parameter in order to change from uh, to change the kinematic from one type of wheel to another type of wheels. But in uh, if you follow this book, the uh, you need to write very different format of uh, kinematics. But anyway, um, I suggest you to read so roughly through uh, yeah. Uh, so roughly on the book because uh, it's easy to understand yes for in, in the case you are interested in mobile robot but if you are more interested in robot arm then uh, you should uh, use a different book okay so the content in this lecture will be about differential drive wheel, bicycle drive, tricycle drive, tricycle with trailer and car like robot. Um, so actually well I think I, I sorry this is wrong. I think the wrong slide it should be somewhere else okay uh, yeah so the part, the first part is about kinematics um, the first I will be explaining about the kinematic of a differential drive so let, let me recall again what is kinematic so kinematic is the formulation that you can come uh, then you can calculate the position and the orientation of the robot from the information of the actuator. So, in information here, I mean the velocity. Um, so, for, for forward kinematics, you compute. You calculate the velocity on the uh, robot frame with the x axis and the y axis based on the velocity of the wheel. I mean, uh, velocity of the wheel, but it can transfer into the linear motion at the wheel like this. So it's it, it is illustrated by a linear motion. So, but this linear motion can be computed by uh, the angular velocity times the radius of the wheel. Okay. So again, I repeat, uh, for work kinematics, you know velocity of the wheel, VL and VR, and then you find the relationship be between this velocity and the velocity through the H axis and Y axis of the robot uh, and also the angular velocity of the robot which is 
file dot okay. And when I mention edge axis, y axis here, I mean the body frame of the robot. Okay, so the method to find this relationship, the forward kinematic, is to use the concept of instantaneous center of rotation. So if uh, in, in this case, uh, you have uh, the center of rotation on the left side of the robot which means the velocity from the left wheel is less than velocity from the right wheel so you can compute the uh, angular velocity of the robot the rotations like this by this formula formulation so the real, um, angular velocity for the robot can be calculated by the velocity the linear velocity divided by the radius okay so linear velocity for the left wheel is vl and the radius from the instantaneous center to the left wheel is r or minus this distance so this is r over 2 it means uh, r is the width okay or we can say the distance between the wheel okay so the the radius for the left wheel is R minus R over 2. Similarly, for the uh, sim so this rotation can be computed in another way, which is the ratio between linear velocity of the right wheel and the radius from the center to the right wheel. So it can be yeah, the radius of the right wheel can be written as this r plus l over 2 so r up to the center here and plus l over 2 here so from these two equations we can rewrite uh, like this omega is equal to this and r of t the radius is defined by this uh, so we rewrite it like this to in order to find the linear velocity of the robot okay linear velocity of the robot here which is angular velocity omega times the radius the r itself okay um, So finally, uh, the linear velocity can be defined by this. So actually, it just average between the linear velocity from right wheel and left wheel. And the angular velocity omega is just the ratio between the difference of linear velocity and the distance of the wheel. Okay, so it has very simple form, simple formulation. And then we can rewrite the relationship between, not rewrite, sorry, but uh, we can define the relationship between uh, velocity on x-axis and y-axis and angular velocity on the of the body frame with respect to the global frame in this format yeah so here is the relationship between angular velocity of each wheel because um, well I, I, I should start from here so the velocity on the x-axis of the body frame 
is the same as the velocity of uh, linear velocity I mean the magnitude is the same so in, in this case we have a direction so actually it means uh, this h dot is equal to uh, this velocity yeah when we write this like this in a component uh, manner then actually this v is the same as this v uh, but here is just to uh, tell you that this the v velocity v project into the unit vector hm but anyway in the differential drive case this v is on the hm axis already that's why uh, we still have a v like this and the velocity on the y-axis actually is zero okay and um, yeah here this one is zero this one is re reduced to v only okay and then omega dot equal to omega i'm oh, sorry phi dot equal to omega okay so phi dot here to uh, yeah phi dot denote the angular velocity of the body frame with respect to the global frame uh, okay and it can be defined by omega which is equal to this value so if I substitute this to this to here and V had this uh, formulation and the VR here and VR here the linear velocity is obtained from angular velocity of the wheel okay, times the radius of the wheel this one also omega r times the radius that's why you can get radius of the wheel over 2 radius of the wheel over 2 here in the form of matrix and you time this so this is the forward kinematics by knowing this angular velocity of, of uh, each wheel then we can compute the velocity of the robot with respect to the robot frame for the inverse kinematic well uh, inverse kinematic uh, you know the information of velocity on the body frame and then you compute yeah you calculate linear velocity and um, orientation velocity first before you transform into angular velocity of each wheel okay so you if you know this you know this you can easily calculate angular velocity of each wheel so from based on geometry well um, yeah this one it's very obvious that uh, actually v square is equal to h dot square plus y dot square then we can find v yeah by this and angle of phi angle of phi um, oh well actually in this case uh, h dot and y dot is defined in global frame okay this in global frame so we, we can have a straightforward uh, the inverse kinematic from velocity in global frame to orientation velocity and linear velocity okay rotation velocity and linear velocity okay so well let me go back a little bit uh, here yeah to avoid confusion um, so actually here you 
you have relationship between angular velocity of each wheel to velocity on the body frame. <coughs> but you already learned before that to have relationship between to, to transform the coordinate in the body frame into global frame you just need to multiply by rotation matrix. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> okay. So if you know the velocity in the body frame, you can easily transform it into global frame by using rotation matrix like this. So you get uh, h dot, y dot, and still phi dot here. So then inverse kinematic. Um, you can, yeah, you can uh, straightforward from this to around here, but here you express in terms of linear velocity and angular velocity. So these two can express by, can be expressed by linear velocity. Okay. This is the equation of inverse kinematics from velocity in the global frame to linear velocity and rot uh, rotation velocity or angle velocity of the robot. Is there any question uh, up to this point? So I go a little bit quick here. Yeah, you can continue. All right. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I need to give one more relationship. Yeah, actually, this this one is obtained from phi dot. Okay, so the the time derivative of this become this. Okay, so all this for based on geometry and uh, calculus. I think you can easily review it later. Then the next. <coughs> Robot is bicycle drive, and for bicycle drive there are two cases. The first one, the the drive is by the front wheel, the, by the steering wheel itself. So that's why uh, I put here steering wheel drive. And the other case is that the drive is on the back wheel, the rear wheel. So again, we use the concept of instantaneous center of rotation. And the way we find this center is to uh, construct the, the perpendicular line of the linear velocity on each wheel. So for this wheel, uh, this wheel produce linear velocity in this direction. And this will produce linear velocity in this direction. So we construct the, the perpendicular line or these two vector, and then you get the center of yeah the instantaneous center of rotation. So we call it instantaneous because this point can change when the robot. Uh, move to a different place <coughs> but uh, <coughs> from the concept of this we can find relationship between uh, rotation of the robot uh, linear velocity of robot with the uh, <coughs> So linear velocity and uh, well, 
linear velocity and angular velocity of the robot have relationship with the global velocity the velocity on the global axis based on geometry okay but but first uh, the direct relationship is the velocity on the body frame yes sorry i, I made things up here should think uh, step by step so first based on the instantaneous center of rotation concept you can immediately find the relationship between velocity on the body frame and linear velocity and orientation velocity of the robot something like this so here um, the linear velocity of the robot is on HM yeah, because the center of the frame of the frame HM and YM is at yeah here so the center is here then the velocity on the HM axis can be defined by uh, linear velocity by the robot time cosine alpha cosine alpha means because the linear velocity on, on this axis is obtained from linear velocity on this axis projected on the h axis okay okay <clears throat> yeah it's because the steering wheel drive so it produces linear velocity in this way but in order to make robot to move on the hm axis you need to project it onto the hm axis then you have a cosine term but uh, what about the velocity on the ym axis this linear velocity cannot produce the velocity on the ym axis okay so it must be zero and then the rotation the rotation with respect to the center of rotation here omega which is phi dot can be defined as linear velocity divided by the radius okay um, so yeah so the velocity um, we can to confirm my argument is uh, I need to rewrite this one uh, phi dot equal to uh, h dot um over r but r is what okay but r actually can have relationship with d because this angle is alpha okay this is alpha so this one is also alpha because this perpendicular to this and this one perpendicular to this okay then the r must be and um, so oh sorry i think i have cosine here cosine alpha and r is um, d time cosine alpha over sine alpha okay then substitute this uh, to here we can say cosine alpha and then we can have sine alpha here okay then uh, we can find we can transform the car the velocity coordinate on the body frame to the velocity on the global frame okay this is no uh, this is a mistake um the rotation matrix is cosine psi sine psi 
minus sign psi not psi sorry here we use phi okay and yeah if I consider only these two so that's why this appear here and uh, this sign phi up here here okay so this is just transformation from global frame to uh, from body frame to global frame okay uh, this one is still the same okay so finally we can have relationship between velocity in the global frame and linear velocity and rotation velocity of the robot okay um, for the yeah so we can relate linear velocity with the steering wheel velocity and the steering wheel velocity can be rewritten as omega s of the steering and time r okay so we can also have relationship from global frame velocity to velocity of wheel sir yeah uh, can you just re-explain why uh, y dot is zero just for a sec okay because y dot here is the velocity at this the origin okay okay velocity of the origin of the frame hm and ym so at this point it cannot have velocity in this direction correct oh yes yes yeah okay thank you okay and then so i can continue to the next slide <clears throat> Yeah, for this uh, slide, the the rear wheel drive. So now the linear velocity must be defined uh, in relation to the velocity of the rear wheel. So V R is the rear wheel velocity, okay, and can be define as omega of the rear wheel times the radius of the rear wheel <clears throat> so clearly that velocity of this point on the hm must be equal to the velocity of the linear velocity of the rear wheel itself and again velocity of this point on the y-axis must be zero and the angular velocity of the robot yeah no, we can say the velocity of the orientation can be defined as yeah start from this yeah start from here velocity of the lin linear velocity divided by the radius r and radius r actually equal to radius r equal to uh, this one is also alpha so equal to d d over tangent goes yeah i can say tan alpha equal to d over r then r equal to d over tan alpha okay so we have vr over r then we can have can have this <coughs> so here we already have relationship between angular velocity of steering wheel or sorry rear wheel the drive yeah uh, angular velocity of the 
the rear wheel and the velocity on the body frame then we transform into global frame and here the final equation of the kinematics so most of the time we just express the kinematic equation by uh, velocity on the global frame and linear velocity and orient orientation velocity of the robot okay we, we, we don't need to express up to angular velocity of the drive because uh, usually it has uh, direct I mean uh, it, it, it has linear relationship so it means as long as we can know this we can easily relate it to this <clears throat> so anyway for bicycle try for what kinematic can be fine easily but inverse kinematics uh, is very very difficult eh? yeah it's very difficult so it's not covered in this book <clears throat> then the next part the kinematics of tricycle <clears throat> Um, so from the yeah this one the, the kinematic is the same as bicycle drive actually uh, for the for the first case the drive is on the steering wheel okay and equation looks the same because this wheel and this wheel we can imagine that uh, we can replace it by this wheel and then it can be dry the same way as bicycle dry <clears throat> um, but if if we use the rear wheel dry rear wheel dry will need two actuator one here and one here then it will be just like differential drive okay because this front wheel has nothing to to do with the driving it just to um, make the robot uh, like stay on the floor okay so the kinematic will be driven by these two wheel if you put a two actuator on the two wheel at the at the rear at the back <coughs> Okay, and the next part is the tricycle with trailer. So the kinematics of the, the, the tricycle itself will be the same. So from this equation to this equation. But then if we want to find the kinematic of the trailer, again, we use the concept of another instantaneous center of rotation. Okay. <clears throat> by drawing line perpendicular to linear velocity okay, linear velocity here and linear velocity here then we can get the center of rotation here so this trailer this trailer is described by I mean the kinematic is described by the rotation of angle beta so omega 2 angular velocity omega 2 which is beta dot <coughs> equal to the linear velocity v divided by the radius r2 from here to here so r2 um, r2 here can be find uh, can be defined by l and angle beta so that's why we can reduce it uh, to have 
relationship with ln data beta so this is the last equation of the for the kinematic beta dot equal to all of this okay so we now we have another parameter the variable beta to describe the rotation of the trailer Yeah, so we, we can completely describe this trailer uh, by only one variable beta because we know this distance and if we know the angle beta here, we all know angle beta here, then the, we can find this angle also. Okay. Then we can find this point okay so we can describe velocity we can describe position of the trailer okay and the next one is also very popular the car like robot or uh, sometimes it's called Ackerman Drive um, so uh, assume that uh, um, assume that the left wheel okay when we want to turn it to the right when we turn the car to the right the inner wheel, which means the in the wheel on the right side, must have lower linear velocity. Okay, so this side has lower linear velocity. This side have higher linear velocity. Okay, and of course, linear velocity of each wheel also different. Okay, different. I mean, even though they are on the uh, the same side, for example, the outer side, but each wheel still have different linear velocity. <coughs> so to find, yeah, first we need to find the instantaneous center of rotation. <coughs> so we draw this line to be perpendicular to this linear velocity. This line need to be perpendicular to this linear velocity, okay? And we can draw this line as well. So the intersection, all these three lines, is the center of rotation. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So first, we need to find the relationship of. Um, linear velocity and uh, the radius okay so go let's go step by step um, yeah let's go step by step first we define the angle uh, this one we can say cotton okay cotton alpha alpha l so if alpha L is here, uh, this is alpha L. So this alpha here, L here is the same as alpha here. Alpha L here. Because we have this perpendicular to this and we have this perpendicular to this. Okay. <coughs> So this right triangle, from this right triangle, we can find this relationship. Cotton uh, alpha L equal to this catheter, uh, I mean this length, divided by this length. So R plus L over 2 over D. 
and for this one uh, for the alpha or alpha or here is the same as here so we look at this triangle right triangle okay then we can have this relationship as well so yeah the numerator here is r minus all over 2 instead okay <clears throat> then we can find alpha l alpha r um <clears throat> so we got relationship between alpha l alpha r with the radius and then uh, the linear velocity uh, relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity and the radius okay the radius all of this so linear velocity so here the center of yeah the center of the frame is here okay center of the frame so this is hm this is ym um, but anyway linear velocity vl the vl defined by here vl yes here on the radius no not vl is not here um VL, vr so actually yeah so we are here is the, the velocity that already projected onto the x-axis okay so we are here project to the x-axis which mean uh, linear velocity on hm like this and it <clears throat> Yeah, because we we only after we, we when we project this, so linear velocity, linear velocity here is same as velocity, linear velocity here. Yeah, this is a little bit com complicated. Eh? Yeah, a little bit complicated. Lin linear velocity here. The, we should have alpha. Um, well, I will recheck and uh, get back to you in the next lecture for this part. I think there, there is something missing. <clears throat> there's something missing here okay let me skip this one and I will get back to you later so let's see the last uh, type of mobile robot which is track drive <clears throat> so it have two track left and right like this and the kinematic is actually the same as kinematic of differential drive wheel and this is the equation of kinematic of this drive which is the same as differential drive and then let me explain uh, some terms uh, about the constraint and the first one is called holonomic holonomic constraint um, <clears throat> means the constraint that that relates relates variable or general like coordinates so if the constraint equation only involves general like coordinates of position 
so there's no velocity here in this equation then we call it holonomic so actually this constraint this type of constraint exists for robot arm or mechanism multi-body I can say yeah uh, multi-body or mechanism okay <clears throat> so again the holonomic constraint usually exists for robot arm and mechanism but uh, because it we, we don't have the constraint on velocity <clears throat> and then the holonomic non-holonomic constraint so if the constraint um, the constraint means the relationship that uh, the relationship that um, how to say that reduce the, the freedom the freedom of motion okay so in here we have general like ornate of position and also general like ornate velocity q dot so we have q relationship by this function f of q and q dot then this kind this kind of constraint is called non holonomic but anyway if if you can write down the constraint like this but then you can um, integrate uh, in such a way that q dot is eliminated from the equation then it becomes just holonomic okay so here it's, it's a, a kinematic constraint two point certified is holonomic if it is integrable okay so this uh, need to be careful yeah you need to be careful uh, to term whether the system is non-holonomic or holonomic so by the way for the robot for mobile robot like differential drive you cannot have the motion on the y-axis of the body frame so in some sense uh, you reduce the degree of freedom on that axis then differential drive is a type of non-holonomic but for omni wheel and mechanum wheel three wheel and four wheel it is a kind of holonomic okay all right So one hour already passed, and uh, I guess uh, you need to take a break. But before that, you may have some questions. Do you have any question? No, it's okay for now. Thank you. Yeah, it's okay. All right then, so you take a break about five minutes, so we restart at 10 past 10.